Hey guys, NintendoFan64 here, here to talk about 5 games I want on the Nintendo Switch. Number 5, Super Smash Bros. Number 4, Super Smash Bros. Number 3, this is going to be a bit of a controversial pick, but Super Smash Bros. Number 2, Super Smash Bros. Before I get to my final pick, here are some honorable mentions. Super Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Last pick, Super Smash Bros. is the grand w Yeah, okay, you guys get the point. That's boring as hell. Obviously, everyone wants Smash, Mario Maker, and, and all those games to come on over to the Switch. But there are a ton of amazing games that should come over that no one's really talking about. So here are three really good games that should come over to the Switch. First up, we have Battle Heart 2. So, in order to understand Battle Heart 2, you're gonna probably have to understand Battle Heart 1. Battle Heart 1 is a mobile app by Mika Mobile, which is probably my favorite mobile game developer of all time. Also, probably my favorite indie studio of all time. These guys are so nice. I mean, here's one story that just proves how awesome they are. So, they ported one of their best games, Zombieville USA 2, over to Android. And they didn't want people who have already bought their game on iOS to have to buy it again on Android. But, however, there's obviously no way to check if someone's bought it on iOS and, and then, like, bring it over to Android. Like, that's, that, you can't do that. So instead of just screwing over the, like, maybe 1% of people who already bought the game on iOS and still wanted to buy it again on Android, they just made it free on Android! I mean, that's just, like, you never see that now in the industry, and it's just so nice to have a company that's... Just, just such an awesome, I mean, they're just really the best. So anyway, Battle Heart 1 was probably my favorite mobile game from the years of like, ever and ever. It's so good. It's kind of an RPG style game where you craft a party of four and gotta kill out all the enemies. It's got a ton of replay value and all that stuff. But then, Battle Heart Legacy. This game's awesome. It's probably one of their best games to date. However, it's not a true sequel to Battle Heart and I mean, it's awesome, but I, I want a Battle Heart 2 so bad. But then, bum ba bum ba bum ba bum 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 Battle Heart 2, baby! Look at this! It's got a different graphical style. It just looks amazing. There's gonna be so much content. They've been working on this game for over a year. I mean, just look at this. Look at it. It's so good. However, I asked them, yo, you gonna bring this game to the Switch? No, we're not gonna bring this game. Why? Why? Why would you not bring this game to Switch? Turns out they asked Nintendo for a dev kit for the Switch, and Nintendo just, just didn't even respond. What the fuck? I mean, they're so good, and I really, really want this game to come over to the Switch. And I know, I, if I was, like, a big YouTuber, I'd be, like, start, like, a hashtag or something for people to petition Nintendo. But two things. One, when has Nintendo ever listened, ever? <laughs> and two, I'm not a big YouTuber, so this that won't work. But, like, come on, Nintendo, really? They let so many dick mobile games come over to the Switch, but one amazing mobile game that's trying to come over isn't allowed? Like, what the hell? Anyway... If Battle Heart 2 can come to Switch, I haven't even played it, it's not even out yet, but if it can come to Switch, oh my god, I'd be so happy. Game number two is The Adventures of Pip. So, yeah, this is a bit of a weird one, and I never thought I'd say this, but we need more 2D platformers on the Switch. Obviously, we're getting Kirby and Yoshi later this year, which will help fill that 2D platforming void in my heart, but like, come on, Nintendo! <laughs> They're known for 2D platformers. We just get swarms of them before, but now on the Switch we barely have any. Obviously, there are a bunch of indies that kind of help fill that role, and that's what I think this could be, but like, once again, come on. Anyway, side tangent over, what is The Adventures of Pip? Well, it's an amazing 2D platformer, which has one of my favorite gimmicks of all time. You switch your resolution in order to solve puzzles. That's right, you can be 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, wait, that's not true. I don't know, you go from this to this to this, I don't know the exact resolutions, but it's, it's really fun. And it helps you solve puzzles too, for example, the block can just jump higher, but the middle one can wall jump, it, it, it's really a brilliant idea. Couple that with levels that aren't super challenging platforming wise, but have a lot and a lot to explore. And you've got an indie platformer that rivals some of the best. This game really deserves a lot more attention, and it would get that on the Nintendo Switch. My next pick requires a deep, dark backstory. It's a story I'm ashamed to tell to this day, and I, I, here goes nothing. So when I was a stupid idiot kid, 
I had something called Club Nintendo, where every single Nintendo game I got would come with a code, and I could redeem that code for points. I saved up all my points, and then finally when there was a sale, I was able to get an actual Wii U game from just free, because I had so many other Club Nintendo points. I remember the games I could choose were like a couple of weird ones, and then the three other games I could choose were Zelda Wind Waker HD, a game I already had, Pikmin 3, and We Party You. So like a stupid idiot kid, I chose We Party You over Pikmin 3. I regret that decision to this day, and I just, I don't even know what to say. But anyway, at least I've got a drink coaster in We Party You, right? Well, like another stupid idiot kid, I decided to load it up on my Wii U. I figured, what's the worst that could happen, right? God, was I wrong. There were a ton of stupid modes in this. This was not a very good game at all. There was like this board game mode where it was like one long bridge. Like what, wh who would build this? Anyway, doesn't matter. The one good mode in this game was called Spot the Sneak. It wasn't even a mode you could like get, right? You had to unlock it somehow. Yeah, that's right. There was a secret unlockable mode in We Party You. Who, who even cares enough to unlock it? This stupid idiot kid did, and it was actually really, really fun. So, this is, I guess, kind of cheating for my last pick, but don't bring Wii Party U Nintendo Switch Definitive Edition Deluxe, like, what, what, that's never gonna happen. But bring over Spot the Sneak. You can literally ask anyone in my family, please don't, that's actually really creepy. But whenever I play this with them, we have a blast. This is still one of our favorite game modes to play on the Wii U, and I think, I think, like, I, I, you're, I'm gonna get a ton of hate for this, but I think this is probably the game mode I play most on our Wii U now, because Mario Kart, um, Splatoon, all that stuff's on the Switch now. I don't really play Mario Maker much anymore, and I've never really been into Smash that much, so I think we actually play Spot the Sneak the most on our Wii U right now. <laughs> Which is just terrible, like honestly, but this game mode is really fun, let me just say that. I should probably explain what it is though, because I've been talking for like 7 years and not actually said anything. So Spot the Sneak consists of 4 players playing a collection of minigames, and every single minigame you play, like normal, but one person is the sneak, right? And no one else knows who the sneak is, except when you are the sneak, then you know it's yourself, obviously. And you have a secret power, for example, um, there's this one game where you have to like, s select cards and one card is good and like the rest are bad, your Wii Remote, if you're the sneak, will rumble when you hover over the good card. It, it's basically like hacking. So you play the games like normal, right? Except the sneak can obviously easily win every time if they use their powers. However, you're not gonna wanna just win every time on purpose because at the end, you vote on who you think the sneak is. This has led to so many hilarious moments with me and my friends, especially my cousins. We play this so much fun. Anyway, I know that's like not really a game that's just like a mode in one kind of bad game, but trust trust me, this is a really fun mode and if they could bring this over to like maybe the next Mario Party, oh my god, my life would be completo. Anyway, this was just a very laid back video, I kind of rambled like for way too long. If you're a new viewer, this is not normally what my channel's like. I just wanted to make videos about each three of these games individually, and then I finally found a way to link them all together, so I thought this would be fun. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've played any of these games, because I'm pretty curious. If anyone else has played Spot the Sneak, let me know. Um, it's just so fun. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.